for Mr. Moscovici. We'd like to invite um, the Commissioner to Greece and to the permanent representation in Athens. It's a great joy to have him with us. He is the Commissioner that has visited more than any other Commissioner our country, and I'm sure that uh, it hasn't escaped your attention that the frequency of his visits uh, has become more these uh, past few months. So I'd like to thank him for the frequent visits and for the support he has provided to Greece. And I'd like to give him, without further ado, the floor so that the Commissioner can convey some messages and describe the results of his visit to Greece. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Panos. Good morning. Uh, I spent uh, uh, already a very productive 24 hours in Athens. Uh, the the uh, frequency of my visits is explained by the fact that I uh, represent the Commission inside the Eurogroup, uh, when uh, especially uh, the Greek issue, the Greek program is uh, concerned. I've had meetings with uh, President Pavlopoulos, uh, whom I didn't meet before, um, with the Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras. We had a very long meeting. We have a very strong and confident uh, working relationship now. Uh, with the finance minister, my good friend uh, Euclid Sakalotos, uh, with the economy and development minister, the new minister, uh, Dimios uh, Papa Dimitriou, and the labor minister, uh, Efi Atsiyoglu. Um, and uh, I also uh, attended, uh, participated yesterday in a, a dinner uh, hosted by the uh, American Hellenic uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, to which I delivered a keynote speech that was the occasion to, for me to meet something like 500 uh, business uh, people here in Greece. And I had um, an interesting uh, working breakfast with the Hellenic Federation of uh, Enterprises, SEV, uh, who uh, shared with me uh, their perspective on, on developments in the real economy, which is a key uh, because uh, the objective that uh, we are pursuing together uh, is uh, Greece uh, going back to growth uh, and creating jobs. A strong Greece uh, at the core of the Eurozone. Uh, this must be our common target. Uh, I wanted to make um, this uh, second visit to Athens, I'm, I'm not mentioning private visits, uh, this year because uh, we are approaching another uh, important moment in the Greek story. Uh, as I have reiterated to my interlocutors um, all over the past day, uh, Greece has made a very significant progress uh, since the stability uh, support program was launched in that difficult, uh, turbulent summer of 2015. I was in that year group uh, on the 12th of July. The very ambitious first review of the third program has, as you may know, been successfully concluded. It was in September, and the uh, second review uh, is now moving forward. And I would say it is moving forward well. Uh, of course, there is still work to be done. Uh, there are still delicate issues uh, to resolve. But while the uh, reform discussions uh, are challenging, uh, there are also uh, essential steps along the path towards a more competitive, uh, stronger, fairer Greece. Uh, so um, my message is that we must continue together along this path uh, with resolve, with determination, but also uh, with, yes, I would use that word, optimism. All in all, I'm optimistic for Greece and for Greece in Europe and for Greece in the Eurozone. I will not comment on each and every measure uh, on which we need to agree. I will simply say that I am convinced that solutions can be found if all parties engage with the right spirit. I've urged all of my interlocutors in the government to make an extra effort uh, to reach a staff level agreement in time for the Eurogroup of the 5th of December. What is a staff level agreement? It is an agreement uh, between the staff of the institutions that are uh, working on Greece, meaning the Commission, uh, the uh, ECB, and my friend Ben Wakere was also here in town yesterday, uh, the ESM, uh, and uh, the IMF. And 
there cannot be any division between those institutions. Uh, the only way to secure good agreements in the Eurogroup is that all the institutions work together and in hand. Of course, they are different. Of course, they might think at the start like, slightly differently. But in the end, you need all the institutions together. And in my view, it involves very clearly the IMF. There cannot be, there must not be, there won't be a divide between the IMF and the European institutions. Uh, next Monday is the 5th of December, and that's the moment when the Eurogroup will meet, and the Eurogroup needs to meet on the basis of a staff level agreement. So my first message is that this staff level agreement by the end of the week, uh, three days from now, uh, is uh, not only necessary, but also feasible. Uh, and uh, moreover, it's uh, clearly uh, in Greece's best interest. Uh, in this uh, uncertain time for the global economy, and also turbulent time for uh, world politics, it would send a signal uh, to Greece's European partners and also to investors that the country uh, is uh, moving forward along the path I designed of reform and recovery. My uh, second message is that if Greece fulfills its reforms commitments, then its partners should also keep their side of the bargain. The Greek authorities take the responsibilities. We must take ours. That means that we must work towards reaching a global agreement, including on debt, before the end of this year, because there is a window of opportunity in that period. And that's why uh, this uh, meeting of Monday is so uh, crucial. Almost a year and a half uh, into the program, uh, Greece has a renewed growth perspective. And that's what I discussed as well with the ministers, but also with the business. Fiscal consolidation and structural reforms are starting to pay off. Already in 2015, uh, back uh, one year ago, the Greek economy contracted, but far less than everyone expected given the number of challenges faced. It is the same for 2016. GDP growth is expected to return in the second half of this year. It is there and to be positive overall in 2017, our forecast in the Commission is between 2.5 and 3 percent. There are some encouraging uh, signs from the labour market as well. The first 10 uh, months of this year uh, saw the highest cumulative net hiring since 2001. Unemployment has decreased uh, to below 24 percent. Uh, from a high of 27% less than three years ago. Let's be clear, uh, unemployment is still hugely high, and those figures are not acceptable in the long run. But things are at last moving in the right direction, and this is the direction in which we must engage, and uh, more than that, we must accelerate in that direction. These trends now need to be solidified in order to uh, pay dividends to the Greek people, uh, because this is done for them, and to the economy, uh, and on a long-term basis. That includes by ensuring, uh, though I know it seems controversial to some to say this, that businesses must be given the environment to stay in Greece and to thrive. It's not a matter of ideology. You need to have a pro-business strategy in all our countries because it's the firms that create jobs, that invest, finally. Uh, investment must be a priority for Greece. As well, domestic investment, but also foreign direct investors must be here uh, comfortable. And Greece needs to be, even more than it is today, and it has huge assets for that, an attractive country. Uh, and it must be put to work such that businesses can actively contribute to job and growth creation. 
As I said yesterday evening in my address to the Greek Economic Conference, I see four conditions for Greece to achieve prosperity and stability in the long run. First, growth must be inclusive. That means that the social welfare system should focus on supporting those who risk being uh, left behind or who are left behind. A nation's wealth cannot be at the expense of its middle and lower classes. Everybody must be on board. Nobody must be left apart. This is a huge challenge, but we must address it. Second, everybody should contribute his or her uh, fair share. I would like to see Greece becoming a positive example for improved revenue collection, for tackling tax avoidance and ensuring fair burden sharing across society. It is a matter of efficiency for public finances. It is a matter of fairness for the people. Third, ownership across the political spectrum uh, is needed to ensure stable economic governance effective reform implementation and results. Greece is where uh, democracy was born. And you love controversies, political controversies. We love that all over Europe uh, and in the democratic world. It's a very interesting sport that I've been practicing quite a lot. But it must not be contradictory to stability as far as reform is concerned. And fourth, as Greece's future lies in the EU area, the country must become an active participant in its European future again. We need European ideas from Greece. Greece uh, is a geopolitical partner of a special place and a special role. Here, you're in the front line uh, of the refugee crisis. Uh, you have a very special relationship with your powerful and sometimes difficult neighbor, Turkey. Uh, there are talks ongoing on uh, Cyprus reunification, and the Commission really wants these talks uh, to lead to this reunification. And these are challenges as well for growth, but for Europe as a whole. And this is why we need an active Greece in the uh, European field, and that is the case. Uh, to conclude, now it is the time to solidify the perspective of recovery, the swift closure of the second review uh, is one way to boost confidence, liquidity, and to show just how far Greece has come and that it is delivering. And provided Greece delivers uh, on its commitments, its European partners should also deliver on them, in line uh, with the May 2016 accord. So I repeat that our target in the Commission is to reach a global agreement by the end of this year involving the second review and including uh, talks on debt. This is doable, this is feasible, but again, the precondition is that we have this week a staff level agreement uh, involving all partners, and that's the message that I clear, clearly carried to Prime Minister Tsipras the members of the government and uh, the leaders of the economy that I have the occasion to meet. Uh, thank you very much. And now I, I look forward to taking your questions and try to answer them, if I may. Thank you very much uh, for your very uh, clear um, statements. Uh, now let's begin with Mr. Sakantaris from Alpha. Welcome, Mr. Moscovici. Very optimistic words. Now we can all wait in the next couple of hours. Some of the German foreign ministry coming down hard on any optimism. Uh, but beyond words, there are numbers, and they suggest that either way, Greece is trapped to further austerity. And I would like to ask you I heard, like you, Mr. Tsakalotos, yesterday making a plea for justice and decency uh, in the parts of uh, Great Doors. And I would like to ask you does the Commission believe? that austerity is as bad for Greece as it is for other deficit uh, member states such as Spain or Portugal at this point, because the businesses will not 
come back without a better tax uh, environment, which is not possible right now, and it's not going to be in the years to come. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, you, you, you say I'm optimistic. You, you, you now start to know me uh, for a, a few years. Uh, and yes, I'm the optimistic guy, not a naive optimist. I was never. I know the difficulties. <coughs> I've been in those talks for so long now. I imagine that during those five years, I must have something like, I don't know, 80 euro groups about Greece, and none of them was really easy. Some were easier than uh, uh, other ones, but it's a tough dossier, of course. But like Antonio Gramsci said, you must have the pessimism of the reason, but also optimism of the will. There is a will, and there is a way. And this way is to build or rebuild a strong Greece inside the Eurozone. If I look at what we have already done, five years ago, when I, four and a half years ago, when I became finance minister of my country, France, and when Mr. Samaras first came to visit uh, President Hollande and myself, uh, I was there uh, at the Elysee Palace in June, the risk was the crisis even bigger, then we spoke about Brexit for years. It's over. There is no question about Brexit. And uh, this situation is improving. Now Greece can come back to growth, and hopefully will come back to growth. So that's my optimism. I would say it is so much a common interest to find good deals between Greece and the EU, because we are the same family. Uh, that. I always believe that we can make it. Until now, I was always right. And I hope I will be right in the future. On the austerity issue? I'm coming to that. Uh, what is austerity? Austerity uh, is when uh, politic or public policies destroy public services, <coughs> weaken the country, uh, and uh, excludes a large part of the population. I'm anti-austerity, and this commission is not about austerity. Uh, as you know, we have introduced in our uh, budget surveillance some flexibility for investment, for structural reforms, uh, for facing the refugee crisis, for earthquake, for Italy, for example. We try to be clever, uh, but we are never lenient to anybody. We're always acting in the framework of the rules. I'm the commissioner for ECFIN. That means rules to me. We are a rules-based system. Uh, and last week, we delivered also a, a statement saying that we would like to see the aggregate fiscal stance of the Eurozone becoming positive now. We have a monetary policy which is accommodative. We need to have a fiscal policy that is supportive. So no, this commissioner is not about austerity. It is neither about austerity in Greece. We want the Greek people uh, to uh, see the fruits of their own efforts. So no, uh, clearly, uh, we are supporting inclusive growth, social justice, social fairness, tax fairness, and we're not advocating for austerity. But let's be clear, this economy and this society uh, suffered from major imbalances and structural reforms are and were necessary. If not, uh, the economy wouldn't be capable of facing the world as it is and the Eurozone as it is. So yes, there are still efforts to be, make, to be made. There are still reforms uh, to be uh, made, but no austerity. What we want is growth. And that's why I think we are at a turning point now. A lot of efforts have been made. The third program until now is a success. The first review is a success. The second review can and must be a success. Then we can open uh, dead talks on a positive basis. Uh, maybe some other colleagues are less optimistic by the will, but in the end, we always find uh, an agreement. Uh, and we need to have everybody on board, whatever the institution is concerned. And again, you cannot divide the EU and the IMF, and whatever the nation state is concerned. 
and of course we need to fully respect uh, Germany's preoccupation uh, in that discussion. We always do, but well, that's a, a narrow path. But I wouldn't call that austerity. I read in some French press that I was here to try to convince you to more austerity. That is certainly not my intention. And this was never my way of thinking. And never Jean-Claude Juncker was thinking. Effort, yes. Be serious, yes. Austerity, no. Thank you. One uh, hand, uh, somebody from the back, please. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Papagiorgiou has the floor. We are talking about debt relief measures always within the framework of uh, the Eurogroup decision in May. In your opinion, which kind of conditionality should be related to these measures whenever they are implemented? First thing first. Uh, the precondition is that uh, we have a staff level agreement, that we have positive moves on the uh, second review, and then we can start uh, further talks. So I'm not moving to the end. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, you have said and you mentioned yesterday and today that the institutions must not be divided. We know that the IMF has asked for more fiscal measures from the Greek government in order for it to return to the program, in order for us to have the 3.5 primary surplus. Does the European Commission believe that there is need for more fiscal measures, for further measures? Thank you. I never uh, comment on what can divide the institutions. Uh, it's clear that we can have uh, different methods, uh, also different sensitivities sometimes, but uh, we need to be together. Uh, the, the, the Commission uh, uh, considers that uh, uh, the fiscal gap must be fulfilled uh, in the framework of the program and that uh, appropriate measures must be taken, uh, but doesn't mean uh, more uh, measures than the one that are foreseen. We have a MOU, and we must stick to that. No more, no less. Thank you. Yes, please. I can't hear the gentleman from Alpha. Could the gentleman speak up? My name is Vagelis Roegis from Alpha. There's something I don't understand here. You say that institutions must be united. On the one hand, we have the IMF, which wants austerity, Berlin, which also wants austerity, and you say no to austerity, and you ask for further measures in order for us to be able to do away with the imbalances. So what are the differences, and what is the philosophy of the one side and the philosophy of the other side? So what measures are we talking about and where are the differences? Where do the differences lie? That's the magic of working uh, uh, between uh, different institutions and in the framework of the Eurogroup. That's what Europe is about. Uh, in Europe, we uh, have uh, different countries, different size, uh, different economic situations, different governments. Uh, some are center-left, others are liberal, uh, others are center-right. Uh, some are coalition uh, governments, uh, some feel that way, some feel the other way, and we have to build compromise. So I won't give you a, a precise description of everybody's uh, position, but in the end, we must reach a common position. And the specificity of the Commission is that the Commission is the body uh, which is supposed to represent the general interest of Europe. And our view is that uh, we are a rules-based system, that efforts must be made. I'm always saying that efforts uh, are necessary, reforms are necessary. This doesn't mean austerity. There is no equivalence between reform and austerity. Because if you say that, you never reform your own country. And if you don't reform your country, you're not capable of reaching a, a, a strong, uh, a positive situation for your uh, economy. And so, uh, Let's see how the magic will operate in the uh, coming days and weeks. 
uh, let's call it another way, it's not magic. It's just the spirit of compromise. Um, it will be tough. I know that we are uh, facing times which are not going to be simple. Uh, the Eurogroup of the 5th of December is of high importance. Uh, it, will be, uh, it might not be the last one to discuss about Greece. I imagine that there could be other discussions. Uh, but uh, we all have a positive spirit because finally, with all these differences, we share a common goal uh, that is, again, a stronger Greece uh, with stronger economic structures uh, inside the Eurozone. Uh, we've made uh, a lot of way already. There is still a, a path to go uh, on. Thank you. Ikeria. The lady, please, here in front. Elena Laskera from Euro Today. Last time you had told us uh, that you had rather sent a message that uh, the 3.5 primary surplus target uh, will not change. Uh, does the Commission continue to have uh, the same opinion? And if so, for how many years will Greece be called upon to achieve primary surpluses of 3.5 percent? But uh, again, uh, I, I try not to have too many. Uh, personal initiative because we uh, are there to build the compromise and we've got a roadmap that roadmap is the uh, MOU and the MOU uh, sets very precise fiscal targets during uh, the program which uh, lasts until 2018 after that we are no more in the program so things might be different uh, and they have to be considered uh, another way thank you Mrs. Kava. Hello, my name is Dimitra Kava from Capital.gr. One question. Compromise. Compromise in order for the IMF to be back on board. And uh, the IMF says uh, that uh, without new measures, the primary surplus will be 1.5%. Can there be new measures up to 2018? That's the question. Thank you. Yes, uh, again, uh, we want the IMF to be on board. Um, and you must understand that the IMF is a very uh, important partner uh, for uh, Greece first, uh, and also for Greece's creditors. Uh, its presence is an um, insurance a security, a major one. Um, I'm not going to comment on our internal talks on details. Uh, we might have some differences in uh, appreciating uh, the calculation of uh, surpluses, uh, but again, uh, we must find the appropriate path for before 2018, we already know that, uh, and for later, uh, for before, it is a program, and this is the MOU. Okay. Thank you. Somebody in the back now, the lady. The lady in the back. Uh, bonjour, Hélène Goyopoul from AFP. Uh, do you exclude a fourth program for Greece after 2018 and more austerity measures? Thank you. Uh, we're not considering a fourth program. We're in the third program. Uh, three is a lot. Uh, and what we would like is that program to be a success so that there is an exit for the program. Uh, that's clearly our target. Uh, if you look at the so-called program countries, Ireland is out of its program. <coughs> Portugal is out of this program. Spain avoided a global program. Cyprus is out of the program. There is just one country left with the program, which is Greece. And I think that three is just enough. But uh, for that, we need to uh, succeed until the end of the program, to be very serious, very cautious, very constructive until then. So uh, I cannot exclude, but certainly that's not what we want. Uh, when you see the difficulty of this uh, for both uh, Greece and its partners, uh, I think we must enter, uh, we are in a virtual circle. Uh, that is the success of this program 
leading to, I would say, a normal situation. Uh, when I go uh, to uh, uh, present budget surveillance, I always say, uh, I will tell you about uh, the Eurozone. 18 countries and one in the program. My dream is that in 2019, at the end of my mandate, I can come in the press conference and say, I will tell you about the uh, budget surveillance of the eight, 19 countries of the Eurozone. None being in a program. Thank you. Ο κύριος Παππούς ζήτησε το λόγο. Ναι, ναι, ο κύριος Παππούς. Mr. Παππούς has asked for the floor. Yes, please. Hello. You're George Παππούς. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, I newspaper. My question is, in the European Commission, do you think that there's a possibility of early elections? And what do you think about that? Early elections in Greece, I mean. Thank you. Uh, I'm a bit surprised by your question because uh, we are not uh, involved in Greece politics. Uh, there is a government. Uh, this government is legitimate. It has a majority. Uh, we are, of course, uh, in contact with the opposition parties. That's logical. We want to discuss with all democratic forces in Greece. Uh, but it's up to uh, them to organize the political spectrum. Um, and uh, as I said, one thing is very important for us is stability in the governance, stability uh, of the commitments to reform. Uh, after that, for the uh, democratic uh, rhythm, it's not up to us to decide, uh, but we are working in good conditions with uh, Alexis Tsipras' government and uh, seeing that uh, we're working in the framework of a common roadmap, which is the MOU, and that there are strong deliveries of reforms, and that this must go on. For the rest, it's up to you to decide. Not you, the journalists, but you, the Greeks. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, welcome. Dimitrelis from STAR. The IMF characterizes the further reduction of the tax-free threshold in Greece and uh, the uh, further cuts in pensions, apart from fiscal measures, structural measures. It considers them reforms. It talks about expanding the tax base and so on and so forth, and distributing the uh, burden in order for us uh, to move on in Greece. So it considers all these things structural measures. Without wanting you to comment on what the IMF has said, I know you avoid that. My question is, what is the position of the Commission in relation to these two matters? And if, uh, according to the perception you have, whether these two interventions can become part of the compromise you seek, because you said that a compromise is being sought. Thank you. You made the answer yourself. I'm not going to comment on uh, this or that position. I'm going to work for the compromise. And uh, um, I insisted especially uh, on the fact that we must, uh, of course, have a sound fiscal policy and uh, have a good deal on collective bargaining. Thank you. Mr. Filipidis, Mr. Filipidis, here in the front. My name is Filipidis. I'm from Sky. Good morning. You talked about entrepreneurship, uh, about businessmen, and you said that we must boost growth. People said that these, with these tax rates and these uh, contributions, social security contributions, I don't think that there will be investment on the part of businesses. And yesterday, we heard uh, Mr. Takalotos make a proposal, and he said, uh, that uh, one uh, percent out of the 3.5 percent uh, surplus target uh, can go to reduce tax rates. Is there anything in mind? Is there a possibility of reducing taxes in Greece uh, under the program? Thank you. You must understand what the program is. The program is not us uh, deciding of anything, everything in this country. Uh, a program country uh, is not a country which has lost its sovereignty. And no country in Europe has lost its sovereignty to fix its own tax rates. So uh, it's up again uh, to the Greek government and to the Greek political spectrum to decide that. 
it is clear that I felt uh, with all my interlocutors that uh, there was a demand from the business to diminish that strength. I uh, cannot comment on that. The only thing I can say is uh, what I told all my interlocutors, that uh, you need to have a pro-business environment, uh, that uh, reforms uh, are necessary to be uh, a full, uh, a strong, uh, a coherent Eurozone partner, but that uh, you need to do more uh, to uh, boost investment. Then it's not up to me to say what and how, but it's clear that uh, there are huge assets in this country. There is a, a skilled workforce, a lot of creativity, intelligence, uh, and uh, th this country has uh, really what it takes uh, to be a, a strong economy. Uh, and uh, we would like that to be developed. That's why uh, we are also um, encouraging uh, the banking sector to uh, stabilize its situation and to address the NPLs uh, problem, which is uh, high. Uh, that's why also uh, we are acting through structural funds. That's why I would like to see more Juncker plan projects uh, being developed here in Greece uh, in order to, to boost. But again, the success of the program itself, the fact that we conclude the first review, then that we can conclude the second review, is a very strong signal to investors. Uh, sorry, we have a problem with the interpretation. We cannot uh, follow this. The body, then I put a metaphor. Maybe this one. Okay. No, this one is not working. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a... Is it working better? Yes. Uh, I said that uh, the success of the program itself is a very strong signal sent to uh, uh, international investors uh, that uh, this society and this economy is moving in the right direction, and that helps a lot. I think we need to finish. One last question, Mr. Rogakos. Uh, that's why you're in the corner, because uh, you're from Nyland. Uh, I'm from Antenna TV. Mr. Rogakos uh, is my name, Commissioner. Labor issues, that's a very important matter for Greece. I heard you saying that you don't want more austerity in Greece, and I think we all agree on that. But there are two, two main proposals in relation to labor issues. One is collective bargaining and non-reinstatement thereof, and two is mass layoffs. Do you believe that these two things will make the labor market more flexible, i.e. that growth will be restored more quickly if this happens? Uh, uh, I have discussed collective bargaining with all my interlocutors here in Greece, uh, and I think that we must uh, take into consideration two points. The first one is that uh, uh, we have some adaptations to be made inside of the program, but the second one is that we are attached as a commission uh, to the European social model, uh, to the requirements of the ILO. Uh, we have uh, set alongside with the Greek partners uh, an expert group, and I think that those uh, conclusions should inspire uh, the spirit of our final decisions to be taken during this week. I delivered some specific messages about that uh, uh, to my interlocutors, to the Prime Minister, uh, to Euclid, and to um, uh, the uh, Labour Minister, Effie, and I hope that we uh, can find a good deal during this week. Uh, there needs to be flexibility uh, in the labour market uh, so that uh, you can hire easier, but there needs also to be a bargaining power uh, and a bargaining uh, capacity in a society. Uh, as I said, if you want to have inclusive growth, you need to have a strong social dialogue. And a strong social dialogue also goes through collective bargaining. But we, 
need there to, to find some, uh, some agreements that are at the same time constructive, but also helping uh, to uh, create jobs. I think we, we, we can make it. One last question uh, from uh, Insula Greece from the islands, the lady. The microphone is on its way. Commissioner Pantelaki is my name uh, from the Aegean Sea, Endless Blue. Uh, I'm from Kalimnos, uh, the Sponge Divers Island. I will not ask you a question. I just want to convey the climate, but also the agony, the cries of agony of the islanders, because they are at the front line. They are on sea, but also on land. They have their agony. So please think of them. Think of better, more favorable tax uh, rates on the island and, of course, tax-free thresholds. It should be maintained on small islands. So thank you very much and have a safe trip back home. I, I've, I've not been in your island, but uh, uh, I, I received the message. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice 